dimensions is an example of mechanical energy. How are they alike? How are they alike? Well, that solid toe is a collection of molecules all moving together to exert a force. The molecules don't have to be in a solid state. Molecules can also move together to exert a force in a liquid state. Even air, which is a gas, can push. Each kind of mechanical energy seems quite different, but they're all alike. Molecules are acting together to exert a force or as scientists say, to do work. When an orange juicer goes around, the input of mechanical energy comes from a solid surface of ridges, breaking up the orange to let the liquid out. How is that input of energy different from the input that produces liquid from an ice cream cone? Well, it's heat energy that causes the molecules in the ice cream to move faster and change from a solid to a liquid. Let's call out the molecule troops to see if we can make that clear. Okay, molecules, how are you? Solid! In a solid state? Solid! Ready to tear into that orange? Yeah! Are you ready, orange molecules? Yeah! Okay, turn on the juicer. Input, mechanical energy. How does this differ from heat energy? They're both moving molecules. Okay, molecules, what state are you in? Solid. Solid, what? Can you feel the radiant energy from that old sun up in the sky? Yeah! How's it making you? Yeah! Okay, we're going to transfer even more radiant energy into heat energy. Now! <laughs> what did that make you do? Yeah! Turned you into a liquid state? Yeah! Input. Heat energy. Output. A solid changes to a liquid. The energy comes from the separate movement of each molecule, vibrating faster. Whereas in mechanical energy, the molecules all operate together to do the work. As you may know, if you've ever tried to lift anything, gravity exerts a strong force. When you lift water to a high position, you've created a potential for that water to do work. Scientists say that it has potential energy. Okay, I got it. Come on down. Now when the water is released, it's pulled down by the force of gravity. When it's moving, it has kinetic energy. You can run a turbine, which can run an electric generator, which can do work. Homemade electricity. This is the same principle, of course, that we use when we build a dam for the purpose of making hydroelectric power. Potential energy, kinetic energy. And when you make it at home, it's free. Free? Uh-uh. If you had to carry all those buckets of water, you wouldn't call that energy free. Knowing how to use mechanical energy makes a great difference in people's lives. For centuries, they've known how to use the energy of the wind of air molecules in motion. 150 years ago, 
If people hadn't been able to use the wind to pump water, farming would have been very hard indeed. A windmill is beautifully simple. The force of the wind is transferred through gears to a crank. The crank makes a rod go up and down, which pumps water to the surface. The energy is free. It's strange that more farmers don't use windmills today. We've begun to transfer the mechanical energy of air molecules to electrical energy. But the problem with wind energy is that sometimes it doesn't blow very hard, and sometimes not at all. There's another very different way that we use the mechanical energy of moving gas molecules. When fuel is burned, the heat energy turns the fuel to a gas. As the gas molecules expand suddenly, they can be used to exert an enormous push. And then we use the mechanical energy of moving gas molecules for small jobs. Jobs such as cooling off, or making liquid evaporate, or having fun. What about the mechanical energy of moving liquids? Well, people have been using that for centuries, too. Almost always, this form of energy comes from water pulled by the force of gravity. One common use of water power in earlier times was to turn a mill wheel to grind grain under a heavy stone. But to use this kind of energy, everything had to be built next to a stream, even factories. It's much more convenient to convert the mechanical energy of the water into electrical energy. The water turns an electrical generator. Wires carry the electricity cross-country to wherever it's most convenient to have the factory. In this case, the electrical energy is being transferred back to mechanical energy to do work. The problem with using the energy of flowing water is that we're running out of places to dam our large rivers. So increased use of water power is limited. Except for small jobs. Or having fun. That leaves the mechanical energy of solids. One of the reasons that our lives are so much easier than for people in earlier centuries is that we've developed so many new ways of using mechanical energy. We still use the mechanical energy of our muscles to do many jobs. We move, lift, carry, pull, open, turn, dig, cut, Sweep, push. Today, all of these kinds of work can be done by machines, starting with other kinds of energy and transferring them into mechanical energy. Push, sweep, cut, dig. to all these ways of using mechanical energy to do work that we don't stop to figure out how they do the work. One of the most important machines for applying mechanical energy is an internal combustion engine. It's so important that we ought to understand it. The principle is based on pistons which are forced down repeatedly so that they make a crankshaft turn. 
This is one of the pistons, which travels in a cylinder. This is the crankshaft that is turned. A valve opens here to let in a mixture of fuel and air while the piston travels down. As the piston moves up the cylinder, it compresses the gasoline and air. At the top of the cycle, a spark from a spark plug ignites the fuel, causing an explosion. The expanding gases force the piston down, turning the shaft. This is heat energy being converted into mechanical energy. An exhaust valve opens here so that as the piston comes up again, it pushes the gases out. This makes room for the next intake of fuel and air. A diesel engine operates in much the same way as a gasoline engine. In either case, they turn a rotating crankshaft whose motion turns wheels or does other work. We use machines to make work easier. They transmit force. And when they transmit force, they often give us what we call mechanical advantage. For instance, you could pull all day on a nail without moving it, but you can pull it out easily with a lever. A lever is a simple machine. Two kinds of levers multiply and give greater mechanical advantage. In a first-class lever like this, the fulcrum is here. The force is exerted here. And the work to be done, the resistance, is the staple. In a second-class lever, the fulcrum is on the other side of the resistance. And this, believe it or not, is a third-class lever. The force comes from the right hand. The fulcrum is the left and the work is done by the end of the bat, you hope. A third-class lever gives you speed and distance rather than increased force. Of all the simple machines, the lever and the wheel and axle are probably the most useful in giving us mechanical advantage. Like the lever, the wheel and axle can multiply force giving greater mechanical advantage. Or if you shift gears, you can increase speed and distance. On a bike, you gain speed and distance, since each step on a pedal takes you faster and farther than a step when you're walking. But as you shift to a lower gear, you increase force and cut down on speed and distance. When you multiply force, you gain mechanical advantage. Every day of your life, you need to make things move. And most of the time, to make things move, you use mechanical energy. Thank you.